So yes, hello everyone. My name is uh, Carl, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how we at uh, Cry or Livy uh, protect medical data uh, without using passwords in some of our apps. So super quick about myself. Uh, my name is Carl. I'm 27 years old, master's in computer science from KTH here in Stockholm. I work as the head of security at uh, Cry Livy, and in my spare time, I participate in hacking competitions for the Swedish team Hacking for Sordio. And if you want to contact me um, after this talk, uh, you can choose any of these uh, methods. So um, this is what I'm going to talk a little bit about. So first, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background uh, about our company so you understand uh, the context and like what's the uh, challenge here. And um, also explain a little bit how we've been doing authentication in uh, Sweden and Norway. Um, which and then how this then led up to uh, yeah, the challenges and the process when expanding to other markets uh, such as France and the UK uh, and talk a little bit about that process, what constraints we have and the solution we came up with and then a little bit about how well that has worked uh, for these like six months it has been in production. Uh, so some like disclaimers and expectation management. Uh, so this talk is uh, more about like the constraints and the design challenges uh, we had for our business case. So this is about constraints, about business, about the, a little bit about the process we went through. Uh, this will not include any uh, new fancy uh, technology. I, I mean, I'm, I'm from a technical background and I would love that, but that is, this is not that talk. Uh, so, uh, Kry. Uh, is what we're called in Sweden and Norway or in Scandinavia and Livy is our international uh, brand. So we are an online healthcare provider. So instead of going to your uh, physical uh, primary healthcare clinic, you can have a, a video meeting with the doctor or psychologist uh, in, with the app in your phone. Uh, so this means that we work in healthcare, we process a lot of healthcare data, including medical records, uh, which is of course uh, extremely sensitive information. Uh, I would argue that it's possibly the most sensitive information an average person uh, has. In, in some cases and, and countries, this can be like a matter of life and death even. So it's, it's, a, it's a big responsibility. Uh, one of our uh, core values at the company is what we call a patient first. Uh, and so we're trying to build uh, a lot, of, like when we design uh, the product and the services, uh, we think about the patient perspective and that means uh, that uh, usability is an extremely important uh, uh, factor when uh, creating this service. Uh, the service needs to be uh, usable by anyone, anywhere, like from from 10 years old to 100 years old, uh, you know, all kind of people. Um, and just a little bit about the size, we have uh, over half a million users and currently serve about 3% of uh, primary healthcare in Sweden and growing uh, steadily. Um, so uh, how have we been doing this in Sweden? In Sweden, we have something called Bank ID. It's a digital identity uh, solution. It's uh, issued and, and validated by uh, banks in Sweden. So it's a privately created system, but it has been well established and used both in private and public sector, including, for example, for doing your, uh, filing your taxes or uh, um, interacting with healthcare. Uh, so that's what we've been using in Sweden. Works perfectly fine, uh, which means we offload the problem of identifying a person to, to someone else and we use, use that service. In Norway, pretty much the same. They have their own uh, thing, also called Bank ID, a digital identity solution which is uh, well established and uh, can be used for this. So up until, uh, up until this point when we were been operating in, in Sweden and Norway, we uh, hadn't really had to think too much about this. It was like this was the obvious solution and we went for it and that worked fine. So. Then uh, we were going to expand to first uh, the UK and then that was this spring and then this summer we also uh, launched in France. And um, in the UK, uh, if I haven't misunderstood this completely, you don't even have like a personal identification number. Uh, and, and that is like something we just take for granted here in, in, in Sweden. 
and there is no um, like established digital identity solution uh, in place to use. And uh, on top of this, uh, our CEO uh, chipped in in this process and uh, he said, well, uh, passwords suck. Can we get rid of them? It's, it's annoying. It doesn't have anything to do with healthcare. It doesn't help uh, the user. <laughs> and we were like, uh, yeah, we can, we can try that. Uh, and he was also like, uh, by the way, we're launching in three months because this business uh, uh, opportunity opened up. So, uh, you know, trying to uh, rebuild large portions of your, of your whole system to, to fit another market with it, all its regulation stuff uh, and also creating this, some new uh, authentication mechanism without using passwords. That was the challenge. Uh, so, basically, we want to authenticate the users without using passwords or any, you know, rebranding of passwords, which is just passwords. Um, and there is no uh, digital identity solution already in place, so we can't just go get the standard thing that they use because there is no such thing. And uh, it really has to be user friendly. And I've listed this three times because it was like we need both because like we are healthcare and healthcare has to be accessible, but also because we are a startup, we need to enter this uh, market and we need to grow fast. So we need to get users on board and get them to use our service so there can be no friction in the onboarding uh, process. But also we want this to actually be secure. Otherwise it wouldn't be much of a challenge. Uh, and a little bit of help was that compared to most other online services we have fairly few users which are fairly valuable, uh, each of them. So it's fine, like there is some budget to, to spend on like manual processes for users. So it's, it's fine if this, the solution doesn't uh, automatically cover every single edge case in an automatic self-service uh, fashion. It's, it's fine for users to have to call in to the customer support and have something solved. So at least that was uh, a little bit of, of help in this. So uh, we started, uh, I don't know exactly where we started, but at some point we started to think about our, our data model. And previously it has pretty much been like, um, you know, one login is one person, and that's, it's all the same thing, like a, a device, a person, a patient, patient. These were all like the same concept, it was a user. Uh, but fortunately, uh, around the same time or a bit earlier, we had uh, to start dealing with like parents seeking health cares for their children, for example. So we had already kind of started moving away from uh, this like one-to-one -one connection between a user and the patient because one user can seek care for both themselves and, and their children. And uh, the children can have multiple guardians. So we have these like many-to-many -many relationship between actual users and, and patients. And then we also started to think about, okay, the device you're signing into is maybe actually a separate, uh, um, a separate concept that we have to treat different, differently. So we started to think a little bit uh, about breaking up our data model into more um, smaller units that we treated differently. And this was very uh, helpful. Uh, we also started to think a little bit about the different uh, scenarios and, and, and use cases. Like what, what do you do with authentication? authentication? You, in a traditional website, you, you register to the website, you log in, you log out. Uh, maybe you need to recover your account if you forgot your password and so on. So we started to you know, write down all these scenarios. But since we are, um, uh, this, the service is only accessible through our uh, mobile app. So there's no... Uh, traditional web uh, interface uh, anymore uh, for the user. So everything was centered around like, uh, what if you get a new phone? What if uh, in that case, do you still have access to your old phone? But you're just buying a new one or was your old phone stolen? Uh, so you don't have access to it or maybe you're just reinstalling uh, the same phone. And also something I haven't really written down is maybe uh, if we want to use your phone number as some kind of factor in this, maybe you changed your phone number and maybe you have your device, but a new number, or you have the, uh, like, you know, different combinations of this. And you started to think about which of these are actually the same scenario and started trying to map this out. Uh, we also, uh, someone also suggested this uh, service. So there's a service called uh, on Fido, which is basically a service where you submit some claims about identity, like, my name is Carl, I'm 27 years old, and this is my address. And then you also submit some uh, proofs for this. 
uh, for example, a, a picture of your driver's license and a picture of yourself. And what they do is they basically see if these proofs uh, support these claims and then give you uh, a status back on that. Um, so we thought, okay, but then we can use that for, for establishing identity. So that's, uh, that's a, a good thing. But it's also a bit of a hassle. It's like a semi-automated process, I think. It's not instant. It takes some time to process this request. So we didn't really want to do this like, directly when you registered because, as I said, we want a really smooth uh, onboarding process. So we actually started thinking about different, uh, different uh, types of accounts. So maybe when you register, uh, before you've had any kind of medical interaction, uh, your account isn't actually that sensitive. It's, we only ask for like, your phone number and your email address. So that's more like a regular user account for any other uh, service. So we started to also rethink this binary distinction between like, logged in and not logged in, like every account being equal. So we said like, maybe actually not every account is equal. So uh, basically, uh, I will, I'll get to this in the so uh, solution. But also one other thing was like, what about uh, uh, revocation? Like what, what about if someone gets access to your account? How can we uh, remove that access from another person? Which is uh, probably also the biggest problem we still have actually. Uh, but anyway, what we came up with is basically um, like a, a public key challenge response thing with this like tiered identity thing. So when you um, register to our service, um, you create a device. Like in, this is the uh, uh, like conceptual idea behind the scenes, and then this is of course presented in, in some uh, user-friendly way on the front end. So you generate the private key on your phone, you submit the public key to the server, uh, it's validated that they, they work and it's all fine. Uh, if you don't already have a user, that user is created and your device is linked to the user. Um, if there already is a user, but that account is uh, empty or it doesn't contain any medical information, then we only need to do a verification via your uh, phone number. You know, traditionally, like sending a, a code and, uh, and do that to kind of recover your uh, account. But if this user that already existed has had any kind of medical interaction, then we uh, force you to go through this on FIDO verification uh, straight away. Um, so when you're signing up for the first time, you just provide some basic information like your phone number, your email address, you sign in. And then when you actually are going to have a meeting with a doctor or a psychologist, at that point we uh, verify your identity and then your account is kind of upgraded from a user to a, to a patient. And that's when it becomes uh, sensitive. Um, and then it's also possible to enroll multiple devices per user accounts and, and link this together. Um, so where, uh, well, there is, we still have some challenges uh, on, the, on the UX part of this to try to, to make this uh, like easily understandable by the users. So, but that's, that's the idea on, on some things we're gonna improve uh, later on. Um, so advantages of our system, like this is our opinion. Well, there is no password to remember or uh, that can be fished, that's good. Uh, it's uh, pretty, uh, pretty seamless, like you just log in, you provide your phone number and your email address and it works uh, fairly well. So uh, we, we consider it a fairly uh, user-friendly uh, process. And since we have um, tied the uh, access to your account to the physical device, we have reduced the attack surface uh, from like, like a global to a local uh, scenario, which is uh, also good. Some Disadvantages is that it kind of breaks like a con conventional mental model for most users. We have been like, conditioned throughout all our lives that you know an account is a username and a password, uh, and that's what you put in, and you can log in, and then you can log out again, and you can log in and log out, and someone else can log in on your uh, phone if they want, as long as they bring their own uh, account. So that's all of those concepts kind of changes here where we don't really have a login step we have a registration step and link uh, possibly linking to your previous account step which is similar but not the same and this is a problem because then we uh, we try to use the same words that are well established like registering and logging in but it doesn't work exactly like the user is used to so this causes some some uh, a little bit of challenge on, on the UI side 
Also, uh, the revocation of access is currently uh, a manual process. You have to contact the customer support to get that device uh, disabled. And it works, but maybe if your phone gets stolen, uh, you would like that uh, process to be, uh, well, instant. Uh, and maybe it's uh, not currently. So because we have to go through these fairly manual steps of ver verifying your uh, identity. Uh, and so this has been in production for about six months. And uh, well, users are registering. They are staying. So they managed to uh, use the service. We have had um, very little uh, contacts to the customer support about people not being able to uh, use this. There have been a couple of cases, uh, especially in these situations where two, pe two people have wanted to use the same device and uh, uh, some confusion you know, when switching devices and stuff. So it's, it's still not uh, perfect. There is still room for improvement, but um, it works, I would say, and we have had no, no known incidents of accounts being uh, stolen or uh, hijacked in any way or any data uh, leaking. So that's also good. Well, I mean, you always have this problem with, with this, these kind of things that there might have been cases, but we don't know about them. But, you know, uh, this is all we have to go on, that we have no known incidents so far. And it's, uh, it's uh, I mean, we are uh, a startup and really uh, subscribe to like this uh, uh, agile and iterative uh, work processes. And we're, this is something we're uh, working on uh, continuously. So um, trying to make this uh, process even smoother and more secure. And yeah, that's uh, pretty much what I had. Thank you.